this thing was feeble, that it was nowhere near as powerful as what we are. Ha. Huh. And also that in following it, and this is all happening more or less on an astral level, if you may, or in, in, in a hyperdimensional level, mm -hmm. I had ended up inside of the center of my own consciousness before it got there. Huh. And this is what people need to realize is that there are that thoughts, those thoughts that you're having in your head is something that's living in the center of your consciousness. And because you take orders from it, you're normally lower than where it is in your consciousness. It could still all be in what we call the brain, but you're in a lower quadrant taking hmm. orders from something that's in a higher quadrant that you think is you. Hmm. So, and I'm, again, I'm not telling a person that they got demons. This is a bad thing. I'm just telling you, this is how Earth's system is working. Like, this is how, this is how vast, that's this right. is how intelligently vast the system is that we're dealing with here. Okay. It makes me think of the word planet, too, because when you break it down, also, you could see plan E-T. Mm -hmm. Or the planned yeah. net. The planned because net. Because this is all. Planned this net. Is all yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all weaving. Mm, Even the ancients yeah. knew that this was this was all a web where this the the vertical lines were the beings the vertical lines were the were let's say the the uh, mm. the actual beings and the horizontal lines were the sequences that connected all of them. That's how the ancients put it. So and mm -hmm. it was a web. Okay. But anyway, what I'm what what happened is, okay. is in conclusion, mm -hmm. the last state was once I realized that basically that this was a uh, autonomous system that was attempting to manage my consciousness if it got too far out of the boundaries like it doesn't want to breathe anymore because that's ah. what started this whole thing so a monitoring maintaining kind of system thing right or... and, and that kind of proves also that you can go and do probably amazing things in the world and never figure out that even the things that you're thinking in your own mind are not yours because as long as you're breathing you're not disrupting the main system <laughs> You see what I mean? Huh. See, because a lot of people, they believe that if they go out and they do something great, then they're going to be hindered by all these Illuminatis. And they're going to be killed and all that. And then they or come up with all these different and all these other right. things. Yeah. And that's just, you know, that, and that sometimes either prevents them from doing it or hmm. maybe they weren't going to do it anyway. And they just needed a reason why not to. Or right? Like that's normal, or most of the time yeah. the case. Yeah. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that the real controlling points in the system just need you to breathe and stuff like that. And whether you do something amazing or what you think is amazing in this world. They're not in charge of not allowing you to do that. <laughs> We're into now the realm where the big things, like this is the head honcho kind of stuff, like, oh, you ain't going to breathe anymore? Okay, we got a big <laughs> issue down here. We got one that's alive <laughs> that doesn't is somehow coming to the awareness that he doesn't need to, be, to breathe. And the reason why I had come into that awareness because I'm coming into the all-knowing stage. And the all-knowing stage starts to, it doesn't have to show you. It's not that kind of stimulus. You feel that you don't need to really do anything. You only do what you want. And so, anyway, in the conclusion... So you come into being. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like you're no longer taking stimulus in. You're no longer, like, just send, receive, send, receive. Yeah. So, at, in the conclusion, what actually happened was... Hmm. I got, because I know we're getting to the end of the conversation. What okay. happened was, I ended up back into the center of my consciousness before it did. Uh -huh. Then after that... Everything that it thought, said, you saw it like <laughs> it was comical <laughs> because it was like it was still trying to talk to you as if it was you, but you knew it wasn't you. <laughs> and then pretty soon it just kind of gave up like <laughs> I'm on the outside now and he's on the inside and I can't get back in because he now knows what I sound like. Huh. Where this also, where this stemmed into, and I have another little gem to drop here. Okay. Where this stemmed into is, is that how this thing normally gets itself, and I don't want to make it like it's a separate entity. It's just a part of the, in, in, the stimulus of the entire system that keeps it functioning. Okay. How it normally gets into that position into our consciousness is because there's literally a, how can I put this? It's almost like when you're happy, serotonin, and a few other elements are released into the brain, mm -hmm. right? And that produces the euphoria and the happiness, okay? That's chemically what's happening. So what I basically experienced was finding things out that we think answer questions for us but really don't hmm. do that same thing. It gives us some 
feeling of a euphoria that gets us excited and we feel like we've actually learned something <laughs> like we feel like that we've actually gone further and that actually what started this whole thing is because i kind of peeped that out about the 360 degree perception thing because while it was explaining that not only was i like but i already know that because i kind of like knew that like three years ago so but why is it coming across to me right now like it's such powerful knowledge because when i come down from this because i always come down mm -hmm. i'll be back in the same world again and that knowledge that i've gotten will have so little application in my physical world in my reality mm -hmm. what value does it truly have and these questions i was asking <laughs> and this is you could imagine again if you were responsible for managing the system that does all this you would be very uneasy because like man we got one that can see It'd be like the movie they live at that point. Ha. Huh. So that's actually what happened. And then after that, everything changed for me. Now, I've had many different changes. Mm -hmm. But this change off was a, just another level up. Now, I don't really, I know when, and this is the interesting part. I'll say this is what's the change. Like G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle when right. you're dealing with Cobra. Huh. What happened was... <laughs> After that, it wasn't that I could not enter the mind anymore because I realized that once I started processing things and the next day I had another journey, hmm. that the mind was where I kept entering. And in the mind, all what I had just witnessed, that those forms, that's where they live. And that's the realm that they control and program and all that. And every time I get into the mind, I could be subject to that level of machinations and program. Hmm. But... Because you have to enter the mind, because you, you got to think. <laughs> the truth is, you your power is when you know you're in the mind. See, people are in the mind and they don't know that they're inside of that mechanization that's sending suggestions to them in their own voice. Ha. So the moment that you know about that, it doesn't mean that you leave the mind and you never use it anymore. That's gonna that's a lot of training. But it's so less effective, that whole chatter, which they call the monkey mind, hmm. at stimulating a fluctuation within your energetic center. Like, it's basically like you no longer give something energy that you thought was you. And you are retaining now your energy. And that's as much as I can really explain about that.